It's time to make a choice. Are you going to keep doing the same thing, one hard Metcon after the next, aimlessly running your head against the wall and telling yourself the beatdown will eventually pay off, only to show up next year with the same problems, the same weaknesses, and really the same score on the leaderboard? Or will you start to identify your weaknesses, train those weaknesses, and improve them? Will you build a base that will keep you strong, fit, and healthy all year, one that will actually support your desire to achieve your goals? Now is the time to make that choice. Don't waste another year. With six different training paths and additional skill focus progressions, we have a training program that will fit every level of individual in the sport, from the beginner to the games athlete, and you get access to all of them. Our new training cycle starts on May 8th. Head to trainingthinktank.com to join our eight-week no-limit cycle. All right, my friends, we are starting a new cycle on May 8th. Yep. Building a base, improving your limiters, and we wanted to talk about what that actually means because that's going to be the tagline here. But like this time of year is a great time after now going through the open and quarterfinals, seeing where we did really well, seeing the things maybe you as an athlete did poorly. How do we improve those things so that you can actually move up the leaderboard next year? Yeah. So the the previous cycle for those following and then those even coming in, it it already was a bit of a start of limiter season, but it was more like a bridge phase to start setting the foundation to actually start pushing into more aggressive strength cycles, more targeted weakness limitations, whatever you want to call them, uh, and making sure that basically everyone had like a good time of transition between seasons, right? So that's, we talk about that in previous videos, how important it is to actually like feel like, all right, that season has ended and now we are starting a new chapter. And it's really hard to do that if you just jump right back into the same stuff you were doing two months ago. Yeah. And that's kind of the common tendency of the sport is we just go right back into like qualifier style workouts. We're doing hard Metcons all the time. And some people do get better doing that, but it's very few. What percentage do you think it is? I would say that only the cream rise to the top. And so it's like always the best in the sport that they can do whatever they want. It's like LeBron James can do any kind of style training program and he's still LeBron. But most of us, if we want to make it to that level, there are a lot of other things that we have to do. We have to build the foundations and that's what we're trying to do this time of year. Yeah. So I think that it's fun because you can start seeing like the things that we took from what we learned from quarterfinals and really applying them into the limiter season that we're building now. So, you know, just as an example, like the wall facing handstand pushups that we're exposing for people in quarterfinals and not just in the sense of uh, that one skill in itself, but doing it under fatigue and getting to that point and the strength endurance that was required to get you to that point so that you can be in a fit enough state to actually perform them faster. So all of those things are going to start Um, being included and overlapped into the training from the RX standpoint. Yeah, for sure. I think we want to start with intermediate because that's where a lot of our athletes need to start the, the, this time of year, right? We're trying to build those again, the the foundational gymnastics elements so that things like handstand pushups to Mike's point or rope climbs or kipping handstand pushups or toes to bar, chest bar, all those things are improved so that when we get to the actual season, you're ready to rock and roll for the CrossFit stuff. Right. So if anyone is new to the program, the intermediate path is a developmental path. Our goal is to get you to the point where you can be an RX athlete and move into the RX division. But most people coming into the sport that try to train at the RX level, they don't have the skills developed yet. And in RX type programming, there's a lot of skills integrated into Metcons or even just in, even if it's just skill work, it's too high level and doesn't actually help an athlete develop the skill or if they only have a few reps of the skill, have the, build the volume tolerance to be able to actually train hard with those skills. So for the intermediate path, we have a year-long gymnastics development program. Um, from the open and t- through last block, we worked on foundations, went back to basics of skill work, even for those athletes who do have the skills. And this season we're starting our, um, volume progression that builds throughout the year. And what we do is we take the skill and we start to expose it to increasing more demanding levels of fatigue as we get through each cycle. So this is cycle one Mm -hmm. of it. So if you're new, great timing. Yeah. Um, So we're going to start off with isolated volume tolerance. And what that means is you are learning to say, do ring muscle ups just with ring muscle ups. So maybe your max unbroken set is four. Well, we're going to do doubles on a clock to, to build your tolerance there. And we're being able to tolerate ring muscle ups under ring muscle up fatigue without putting other 
ish other factors in there quite yet. So we're not, they're not in Metcons. They're not in intervals. We're just building our volume of those movements. And for those who don't have ring muscle ups, we always have our got none progressions running. This is throughout the whole year, but also in this cycle where we work on ring muscle up, bar muscle up, handstand walk, wall walk, handstand push up, and then butterfly pull ups and chest to bars, teaching you those skills from zero to one. Yeah. I was just going to ask like, for someone that maybe this concept is new in terms of like the training versus putting them in Metcons all the time, like why doesn't that work? So why couldn't they just throw them into Metcon and, you know, expect to get better that way? Right. So say you have a a 10 minute AMRAP and each round you have a set of seven ring muscle ups. Well, if your max unbroken set is three or even seven, you're going to not be able to get much endurance or eat, both in the ring muscle up and then also just in the Metcon because you're not going to be pushed to any sort of breathing limitation, muscular limitation. You just can't do the skill. So it's not good skill training and it's not good engine training. So what we do in the intermediate path is we remove the skills from your conditioning so that when you are doing conditioning, you can actually train your conditioning without being bottlenecked. But then we're still working on developing the skill in either going from zero to one or going from yeah. one to 10 or, or even like in the are. case of a 10 minute AMRAP, the, the amount of focus that's on that skill in that time isn't very high versus an actual training session dedicated to ring muscle right. up training. You're mm-hmm. getting 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes I mean an hour's worth of drills and skills that are helping develop it. And so you just don't touch it enough. It's not dense enough in that setting with just doing it in the mech on that one time where you just kind of pass through it. Right. And this has always been important in the sport, but the way that testing is trending now, even more so, if you don't have these skills, it doesn't matter how fit you are. Like yeah. You're just going to be limited always. Yep. So. I would say that that is the biggest mistake that most people make in their CrossFit careers is just doing hard Metcons and adding the skills that they're not good at into those Metcons, as opposed to at least this time of year, isolating those things, really focused to Mike's point on figuring out the skill, the technique, the patterns, how to breathe within that skill, let's say it's ring muscle ups, and then still do your conditioning work on the other side. So to Mia's point there, you're building your aerobic base, you're getting a really good engine, and then you put them back to get to the together <laughs> later on in the season. Correct. If you're always doing just the 10 minute AMRAP to use that example and you're bottlenecked and you only get two rounds every time, congratulations, you got 14 ring muscle ups in 10 minutes and that's just what you're always doing. It's going to be very challenging to make progress. Whereas if right. we isolate those things, we can really improve ring muscle ups, really improve your engine, put them back together. And now you can get four or five rounds in 10 minutes. Yep. yep. Yeah, for sure. And we're definitely not saying that like there's not a period of time where you don't do those things. For sure. But right we'll now, get there. Yeah, we're exactly. just building to it in a progressive way that will help you be better once you get there. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that's a good point for those that haven't followed our program in the past. This is cycle number one of learning how to do those skills. And then when we turn the corner into the season, so like when we do our open prep time, intermediate is mixing everything back in. So yep. they'll still mm-hmm. do all the Metcons. It's just you have to earn your right to get to that point. Otherwise, look, Most people come to us, they've done something else for three or four years, and they're like, I haven't improved on a leaderboard because I don't have these skills still. And Mm. that's because they're just jumping into those AMRAPs all the time and not improving them. What we're trying to do is like, we are isolating this so we can improve your skills throughout the season so you can do the thing you want to do in 2024. Yep. What else with intermediate? Well, the intermediate path will mirror your strength progressions in the RX path, and then um, like I mentioned, the conditioning work will be will follow the same structure as the RX path. It's just modified in ways not to make it any easier because it's not easier, but to mm-hmm. just pull the um, gymnastics bottlenecks out so that you can really hammer the conditioning work. Yeah, I remember seeing that a lot with some of the throwdowns. You we removed They're worse. some of the limiters. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, removing some of the gymnastic bottlenecks just makes it a way more painful workout. Yeah, I mean, when you graduate from intermediate, you should be really, really fit at the basic <laughs> stuff and then really good at the skills. Uh, and then you just got to learn how to mix it back in. Right. Yeah, cool. cool. So you want to talk about strength for RX yeah, and, let's do that. and how it bleeds into the other programs? So sure. All right. So yeah, as Mia was saying, like we have periods of time through the year where we're going to focus on different styles of strength. And I think that the styles of strength that were tested that we saw this season, um, it was very strength endurance focused, right? Like there wasn't any one RMs, at least in the individual quarterfinal and um, well, there was one one RM, one RM thruster, but it was under fatigue. There wasn't any like fresh tested one RMs like there has been in years past where it was just a a singular lift or a total, um, you know, like 
performing it fresh. So I don't think that that completely derails the idea of how we train for strength in a year round basis. But I think it is something that you will start to see us add in a little more often and maybe a little more sooner and frequently throughout the season, just to make sure that it's like the new skill that's um, showing up just as often as testing one RMs, but not completely yet. Right now, we're still going to develop uh, work on developing your top end absolute strength and one RMs in the clean and jerk and snatch. Um, when I say absolute strength, I mean the slow lifts like the back squat, the pressing, um, the deadlifting, uh, and the pulling. So this cycle is going to be a little bit of a continuation in some of the strength progressions that we'd already run from the previous cycle. But if you're coming in right now, it's reset where basically this is like coming off of a deload week and we're starting fresh with some of them. So Mondays, we're going to look at doing uh, squat clean and jerk, and then you'll follow up with some front squat auto-regulated progressions, which these are going to be pretty fun and they're going to have a little bit more of like a strength endurance type feel. It's going to be something like finding a tough five, and then we'll take a percentage of that. We'll do one rep, we'll rack the bar, we'll rest 30 seconds, then we'll do two reps, rack the bar, three reps, and you basically continue that as far as you can until you hit failure for the day. One to two sets, depending on how much volume we're doing for the day, but it's going to look like that uh, sort of strength endurance style training where it's auto-regulated based on what you can put out for the day based off the percentage that you actually hit. So it's going to help basically keep you very fresh and fit uh, as we progress through our, you know, strength progressions and, and work through the eight weeks of this cycle. Now, where this is different is that we will still have other linear progressions on things like back squat and deadlift, and those would be on other days. But this one we like just because clean and jerks are tough. And then going into front squat after that, it's allowing you to kind of make sure that we're not just forcing you into this box of all this volume afterwards. It's going to allow you to basically optimize what you have for the day energy wise. Yeah. Some of my best strength gains have been on auto regulated programs like that. Yep. So Tuesdays include linear progression, testing for three RM bench press. Uh, we'll have some heavy pressing to, or, um, Basically, to counter the heavy pressing, we'll have some strict three muscle up progressions. Now, I'm calling this strength work because it's not developing strength with external load, but more so developing strength with, with your gymnastics, uh, isometric work, and body positioning. So, um, not just strength. When I when I refer to that, am I always talking about moving external load? We're talking about gymnastics development too, which we are starting to see is extremely important as Bosman continues to kind of advance the skills required in the sport. So strict ring muscle up progressions are going to be a good complement to the heavy bench pressing we're doing that day. We'll focus on false grip pulling strength. We'll focus on dip support strength, um, especially for those of you that maybe have a hard time meeting standards on ring muscle ups. You can do a lot of them, but you're constantly fighting the no reps or finding that you're reaching fatigue and getting the bottom or pressing out at the top. This is a time to actually rebuild your movement patterns and slow down a little bit, pump the brakes and make sure that you're actually getting stronger in all of those positions on the rings. Wednesdays, we're going to alternate weeks of developing the power snatch and power clean along uh, with doing some touch and go, touch and go barbell cycling. So we'll have some repeatability tests is what I'll call them just to simplify the term, basically building into a heavy power clean and then an AMRAP of said percentage of that power clean to practice your repeatability. So very similar to what we saw at the quarterfinal heavy clean and jerk test. Um, it's going to be percentage based off what you do. Sometimes we'll have sport specific weights in there. And that's what I was talking about, about making sure that we're still getting in different styles of strength through the year to make sure that you're just getting better as an athlete in the sport of doing things other than just one RM. Um, and then on that day, we'll also have some deadlift progressions for those that need to improve their absolute pulling strength. And then Fridays, heavy snatch percentage work. Everybody loves coming in uh, from a rest day and snatching right away first thing in the morning. And then that's going to follow up with some back squat and strict press pr uh, linear progressions. These are going to be more Windler style, which I'm excited about because it allows us to basically... I don't want to say auto regulate, but allows us to give you options on controlling the volume well, so that if you're someone who is a really good strength adapter and you don't need a ton of volume, you're going to be able to come in and just do like the three sets that are a basic windler and then move on. But if you're someone who wants more volume, I've got some options written in there where it's like, Hey, you're going to build up to your top set and you're going to have two back off sets where one of them is like a finishing AMRAP for the day. So that's kind of your auto regulated approach for the day. So it might be like, the bottom set might be like 70% of your back squat. Do as many reps as you can uh, until you basically hit one rep before failure. And like that's basically seeing what your body has in the tank for the day so you can optimize that. Saturday, we're going to do some strict weighted pull-up progressions along with some legless rope climb skill and strength work. And then that's where we'll just see an overflow of a lot of mixed strength movements, some bodybuilding, and then you'll see some strongman work in there as well, making sure we're getting plenty of touches on sandbag, carries, uh, and just making sure that it's, it's rounded out through the week. So again, like that's a little bit of an overflow day. Yeah. 
And as Mike has talked about, Mia talked about this, the, the focus of this cycle is on improving those limiters. And what we mean by that is what movements limited your ability to move up the leaderboard or to do better than what you did in the open or in quarterfinals. And we've been able to isolate those because they were actually very pronounced this year. Like, especially mm -hmm. with quarterfinals for individuals, we saw that the handstand pushups, the wall facing played a huge role. Most people got there and it was like four or five minutes to do the 21. It was just a really hard workout. And the same thing with the rope climbs and the rope climb workout. Most people got there and then just fell apart because either grip endurance or like their backs blew up so it was even hard to get their legs up or just technique under fatigue yep. failed them. Uh, and then the same thing is true with some of the other workouts. Like Mike talked about the clean and jerks and how much of a limiter that was. I mean, I, I would love to just write five minute AMRAP of clean and jerks yeah. at whatever percentage week after week. But in reality, you know, or with burpee boxing bowers, but there was nobody in the world that was limited by their burpee boxing <laughs> bowers in exactly. that workout. It was a clean and jerk workout. So yeah. we work on developing the one RM first so that when you move, that weight or even lighter, hopefully eventually that you're just, you're stronger at it. You, you, you can endure it better. So, you know, we've got to start basic by driving up your ceiling of strength first. Exactly. And so the same thing is true with the CrossFit progressions. We want to think about this time of year. Let's get those limiters, those things that we just talked about, like the handstand pushups. Maybe it was ring muscle ups in a workout for you or toes to bar in the first open workout, whatever it may be. And most of those were gymnastics limiters, but let's improve those so that as we continue to move on in the year, we can start doing those things really fast and well without it being a bottleneck anymore. In other words, I don't want athletes in our program to be staring at the wall next year because they can't do another wall facing handstand push up. I want them to be able to push themselves because we've been working on that all year around. And the same thing for all the other skills. So that's the way that we're breaking down the CrossFit movements in this training cycle. So we have eight weeks and we're going to do a couple different variations of those skills. But the first thing will be, we're going to start with Murph prep. So every Monday for the first four yep. weeks, we're going to, that leads into Memorial day. Everyone's going to do that on Mondays. And then we'll obviously do Murph. That's what we've done every year for the last four or five years since we started the program. It's a great time as a community to be able to do something together. Uh, it's a great time for the coaches that want to jump in and do Murph with everyone. So we'll have those progressions. I know people have already asked. And for those that have been in the program this last cycle, you'll notice that there actually are some touches. Like this past Monday, they did uh, an AMRAP where it had unbroken pull-ups and push-ups mixed mm -hmm. in with some other hinging stuff. That was intentional. We're trying to start, we're starting to build that volume now so that you're good at Murph when it comes around because <laughs> pull-ups and push-ups are really challenging with a weight vest on. So we will build that volume. Now, when we talk about the limiters in the sport, we're going to isolate a couple different tests. The first one's going to be the quarterfinal test number one. We're not going to test and retest it in this cycle. We'll come back to that later on in the year, but we are going to test those themes. So we want you to be really good at squat endurance, muscle up endurance, and handstand push up endurance. And so we're going to blend those together every single week in different variations. One week is going to be more interval style, more EMOMs, where we're just isolating the density of the movement. And then the next week, we're going to test it in a way that's kind of similar to what you saw in quarterfinals. So for those that did that workout, most good athletes kind of flew through the first part of that. And then it was just like an AMRAP for the handstand pushups, right? Mm -hmm. Like they got there and then it's just like, how many can you do with the time that you have remaining? Yep. So we're going to write training in a way that you can think about it this way. Like you do a seven minute clock, you're going to go through a bunch of stuff to pre fatigue you. And then at the end of that, there's a two minute AMRAP of wall facing strict handstand pushups. We'll rest two minutes and repeat that same thing for three yep. or four sets. It's not as metabolically demanding as the alternate weeks where we'll do some hard Metcons, but what it'll do is build our local endurance for let's say strict handstand pushups or the same things for rope climbs in another, another day. Mm -hmm. The next one will be a deadlift and rope climb combination. Grip endurance is such a limiter for athletes and that combo of doing a deadlift or any hinge where you're pulling power snatches, deadlifts, power cleans into gymnastics movements. Especially now that you can't wear grips on them. Exactly. Yeah. It's always been a theme and this is something that we've worked on every single year, but we're going to try to really isolate it with rope climbs this year. I think that even though we worked on those a lot last year, the last couple of years, it still was a limiter for a lot of people, even those that are good at rope climbs. So we're going to try to really pre-fatigue your grip in different variations, box step overs into rope climbs, deadlifts into rope climbs, farmers carry box step overs into rope climbs, like all these things where you're holding on and then learning how to do a rope climb well. And that will also be layered in with some technique progressions for the rope. So the way that we're looking at this is very holistic in that we want you to improve the endurance of those things. But like Mia talked about with intermediate, we also want you to be able to improve the technique so that you're moving well. Because as we know, movement economy is very important in the sport. Use less effort per rep by having good technique. Man, I would say of, of all the movements I saw in quarterfinals and just in general on site, learning like learning more after coaching you know for a decade in the sport 
is the rope climb has the most area of improvement for most people that I see in improving that. Cause it's, I still don't see, um, a large majority of the people moving as efficiently as they could to make that movement as easy as possible. I'm not saying the movement will ever be that easy, but I'm just saying the amount of upper body, uh, energy they're wasting due to an inefficient clamp due to inefficient timing. Like I'm still learning to get better at it. So like, I feel like people need to take full advantage of these skill progressions this cycle and take them serious so that you have an entire year to rebuild this pattern. And next year, like no matter what level of fatigue, you know how to use your legs more and get up the rope more efficiently. Cause that was like, people will say my grip was blown up or whatever. And it's like, you were just so inefficient climbing the rope. That's the reality. Like totally. I watched you do it. And like, you just were very inefficient getting up the rope. And one of the things that happens is most people are pretty good if they just do a couple rope climbs. So like, if we're just doing some touches throughout the year, yeah. they feel confident, but then under fatigue, they're not. So that's why we layer both of those things in. Like, let's fix your technique, learn how to clamp correctly, learn how to descend the rope. So you're getting off of it quickly, but then also let's build the endurance in another day. So we can have two days of that where you're continuing to improve both sides of the, the coin, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, uh, the next one is we'll finish our run progression. So th- we've had a ton of success so far with it. Uh, I, I've run these progressions with other athletes in the past. We're doing a one mile repeatability test, um, running one mile repeatability mm-hmm. test, and we're going to finish that in this cycle. So the first couple of weeks we'll retest that for those that are new to the program. We'll have clear directions on how you set that benchmark. And then we'll give you some options for run training as well for those that want to do it. And then that will move us into a, a really a, a kind of a max sustainable row and bike progression for the rest of the training cycle. This is our day to do a little less mechanically stressful volume and more aerobic building mm-hmm. volume. And so that will be every single Tuesday throughout the cycle, similar to what you guys have seen this past cycle with the run progressions. Mm-hmm. And then the last day is we're going to bring the throwdown back to where we'll have that posted every single week. Everyone will be on the same leaderboard. We're going to get back to where all the paths are synced up, which I'm really excited about. Like the throwdowns is kind of one thing each week mm-hmm. that all the paths are doing together. Now there are different levels, like masters will have their own variation and intermediate will have a variation of the workout, but everyone can use that same leaderboard, which is really cool. So that will be every Saturday. And for those that have followed the program, they know that those will be released on Thursdays. Yep. Cool. Do you want to talk about the extra credit a little bit? Heck yeah. And that's, uh, um, <laughs> th- th- I think this is like one of the things that when we started this last year with extra credit, it's just been such a great addition to the program because everyone has those different limiters. Like maybe just, we just talked about this, right? Maybe someone's really good at clean and jerks, but they're not great at snatches. So in the strength, we're giving you different options to be able to do more snatch work or clean and jerks. The same thing with this extra credit. Maybe you're really good at handstand pushups, but your bar muscle ups are terrible and you need to work on that. There are options each day. And so we have four different extra credit options that you'll be able to run through each week. You can pick and choose based on again, what you're good at. Many people need work on all of these. So they add in a piece of it and we're not suggesting do no, all of them no you're going to be uh the walking dead after two weeks yeah but but some of them some of them can or, or yep. those higher level athletes that are used to a second session in a day will do that and also keep in mind that these sessions are built to where it shouldn't take you you know an hour to do an extra credit session this is yep. just one extra piece and a lot of them are movement focused or technique focused so those four we're going to do one that's strict handstand push-up focus still so that'll be your second day of the week so for those that are are limited by strict handstand push-ups that are not in the intermediate program that need improvement, they should do the strict handstand push-up program that's already written in the main day. And then another day of the week, they would do this extra credit. So you're getting two touches every single week. If you follow those, I promise you, your handstand push-ups will be much better by the end of the training cycle. Yep. The next one will be bar muscle-ups. And what we're going to do is it'll be layered in so that you're working on a technique aspect of the bar muscle-ups every single week first. So Mia, I basically... I reached out to me and said, Hey, I need the best technique progressions that you have for bar muscle ups. Can you give them to me? And we're taking those, <laughs> give me the good <laughs> shit. Give me, yeah, give me all the good stuff. <laughs> and so she, she's delivered that for me and there's going to be technique based stuff first. And then there'll be some kind of basic endurance bar muscle up work in those extra credit days. Don't skip out on the technique stuff. Just like we were talking about before learning to have a good jump to pike and a good arch swing and how you get yourself over the barbell. So it's smooth this time of year will allow the rest of the year to be more fun just because you'll be able to do a couple extra reps in a Metcon or go a little bit faster than you think you otherwise would. And it'll keep you healthy, which I think is obviously extremely important. I think that's the big one is like having time in a year where you are, you know, even if you're someone who's following the RX, you need to have a period of time where you are kind of 
rechecking yourself on movement and position, especially as those that are getting closer towards a master's age, um, you start to see a deterioration in movement quality. Just as you get older, you're spending more time working, a little tired more often. So I think you just end up spending less time actually refining your movement patterns. And I think it's, if you're not going to do that on a daily basis, I think you need to have periods of time where you do slow down a little bit and make sure that you are refining your movement still so that you can continue to improve and um, not get beat up as totally. you get older. Totally. The third one is going to be what I would call trunk compression work. So we're, we are going to do some V up work because they came out and it was really, really tough for most people. So this is another one that Mia has written where just kind of some very basic concepts of how to compress your trunk, get your toes and your hands together at the top. So you're actually bringing them together at the same time and not like swinging up your legs and then swinging up your, your trunk. So you don't get no rep on that, but we're also going to layer in GHD sit-ups because that is something that we just, it's coming out every single year. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do them when you start, it's really hard to be competitive. Like you get super yep. sore, your back hurts, you're, you feel like you have yeah, rhabdo. It, people don't have volume tolerance for them or mechanical tolerance for them. So right. you either hear that, well, they started beating up my lower back. Well, we went from zero to a hundred, you know, like in a short period of time, because you all of a sudden knew that you're going to have to do them in quarters keep a frequent touch on them year round and it's going to make you more resilient to the movement. Totally. So those will be in there for those that need more practice on either V ups, which I think everyone should just do the trunk compression work at least. And then yeah, GHDs. those are going to carry over to things like your toe to bar and other gymnastics positions so well. So I think it's super important, especially for everyone that's, you know, like playing around with like the straddle to press now, like all that stuff, being able to compress better and hold a better L sit position, reach your hands to your toes when you're compressing for a V up and then toe to bar, like, Doing a V up, like I have to, it's like a max effort movement for me to yeah. try and reach and compress in that position. So if I'm doing that and then thinking about getting better at toe to bar and I'm like, oh, I got to work on my grip or just do more reps. No, I need to work on my compression strength so that I can actually improve this movement and make it more enduring. Yeah. And then the last one is our endurance option. And I think this is really cool because we're giving you four different endurance options. You only choose one if you're doing this, <laughs> yeah, but I did all need, four today. <laughs> I just did all of them. Mega gains. Uh, if you need, need some help with your just kind of basic endurance, we're going to run like a, it, it'll all lead into a 30 minute test at the end of the training cycle, but there'll be a run, a C2 row, C2 bike, or a C2 ski, your choice on which one you want to do. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. So when you go into this option, you'll see a run option and then you'll see a machine option. Now, if you're someone who is doing the run progressions during that week and you're not a good runner, I think you need to do this run also. This is not a high intensity run. It's intended to be very easy and really it should be a pace that's tolerable most weeks. And what I mean by tolerable is like you're out running and it's like, this feels good. Like I could do this all day. Yeah. And that is where you get better at the skill of running. You're not always so focused on pushing with effort and intensity and, and learning to, uh, con having this connection with running being painful all the time. So this is an opportunity to accumulate a lot of low intensity, tolerable volume. Um, the machine options are for those that either don't need to run that often. Maybe it's too much mechanical stress for them, or they really are bad at like a row, a bike or a ski, and they need to do this. So that's the difference of when you go into this. And if you want to know which one, if you need some engine development, that's how you can decide. Totally. And the nice thing about it is we are in there all the time. So if you have questions on this, post in the water cooler or send us a message, we'll help you kind of guide the process of which extra credit options you should follow, which path you should follow, making sure all of that's squared away so that you can have a successful cycle. Yep. What other big news do we have that we're excited about? Cool. Well, I think there's two things. One, we're going to continue with our strength bias program. So that's yep. always going to be an option for you this time of year. So do you want to just quickly touch on what that looks like? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's basically all the strength work that we're doing uh, Monday through Saturday, but it's written out with the, uh, I'm, I'm removing any endurance or Metcon work there's some base level capacity and conditioning work in there just to make sure you don't turn into like a, you know, like a fat slob, but, <laughs> <laughs> but there's a little more strength volume and it's for those that are still like on the path of like, I need to get stronger. Like I have to dedicate time through a year, focus on more bodybuilding, focus on putting on mass and really focusing on the lifts. Like that is clearly my limiter, uh, you know, in the sport. And a lot of people are very hard gainers. So when we remove tough Metcons, you know, a lot of high volume conditioning, we start to see their body 
uh, improve their restoration between sessions, basically going in, hitting a hard strength session, coming in the next day and actually being recovered going in the next one versus for someone that's trying to get stronger. They do all the strength work, then they do a Metcon and they're 70% recovered coming in, trying to do strength work again the next day. And they're just not getting uh, much intensity and neural drive out of the sessions that are important to actually get better and get stronger. So that's why we built the strength bias path for those that just need a standalone strength program. Totally. And the last thing is, one, we've noticed this over the last couple of years. We are offering a, a bunch of different options for all these levels of athletes. We have an elite path, which we don't really talk about this time of year because everyone's prepping for semifinals. If you're a semifinal athlete and you want to jump on, we have a semifinal path for you. You can jump in right now and peak for semifinals in a few weeks. We have our RX, our RX strength bias, our regular RX uh, path, intermediate. We have a master's path. The one thing that we're missing is for that beginner, the person that wants to be a competitive athlete, but they don't know where to start. Like they, they've touched a barbell, maybe they've done group classes, they have held onto a bar or a pull-up bar, but they don't really know how to do strict pull-ups or kipping. We need something for them. And so we are introducing a 12-week program that's going to help the beginner on-ramp into the intermediate path. Yeah, so I, who this is for, did you have something to add? Um, I was just going to, Brandon basically said it, just like the intermediate path leads into RX, beginners focus is to bridge you into the intermediate path. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say that's who it's for. It's for someone that maybe comes in and is like, whoa, the intermediate's like, there's too many things in here that I'm not quite ready for yet. So we're building this beginner program to help bridge you onto that. So think of it as like an extended on-ramp program that's going to prepare you to go in to be able to do everything that's in intermediate. So we'll have base level strength, base level gymnastics, a ton of instruction, a lot of good videos that are really teaching the movements correctly. Uh, if you're someone that even the basics, learning compound movements, things like a wall ball, thrusters, all that stuff where they're yeah. better more simple, but a lot of people just assume, you know, these things when you go into programs. So we're ha we created this program that you can follow with the idea of completing it and graduating into the intermediate. Yeah. I'm really excited about it because I use a lot of the progressions we put in there just for my own basic program throughout the year. Like I'll do a couple hard training cycles and then I'll do that for four weeks so that I can get back to ring support holds and different variations to keep my body healthy. So it's not just like, oh, this is for someone that doesn't know what they're doing. It's we're going to really build a base. We're going to build that foundation. So to use one of my metaphors right now, just yes, it is, bring it to, out. Build, can't wait. to build the walls of the house. Like we want to build this beautiful house, but we got to no, build that no, foundation. No, no, you no. got better. That was okay. <laughs> I was going to say, get ready to YouTube clip this one, Chris. <laughs> Chris already heard he didn't it do it. Yeah. yeah, I know. I didn't want Chris do to do the taco one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that even apply here? Uh, it, yeah, sure it does. <laughs> like, look, you can't just put meat on a plate. You've got to have a shell there yeah, first. Yeah, if you're trying to make a good taco. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Have the nice and preferably a nice flour shell. Shell. Shale. 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 You gotta get a fire <laughs> shell. <laughs> and then put some cheese on it. I feel like I'm so confused. <laughs> what cooking show am I watching right now? Oh uh, man, some Colby Jack, a yeah. little salsa on top. Anyhow. Yeah. Uh, I think one more thing I want to mention too is for everyone that follows affiliate, or if you didn't know, we have uh, affiliate programming. This cycle is going to be written more in line and more parallel than ever with our compete cycle. So we get a lot of requests from people that follow compete individually. They even pull some of the programming from compete and they want to use it in their in their gym so we're doing our best to unite the communities as much as possible now affiliate is written for affiliates is written for members and like we're going to stay true to that like we're not over focused on the competitors we have the competitive path and we have the fitness path within affiliate but we thought all right let's do our best to make sure that a lot of the strength progressions that we're doing and compete and intermediate progressions that we're doing for gymnastics can go more in line with what we would want to deliver in class that are just more class friendly. So a little bit lower volume, a little bit smarter with the movement selection, making sure there's not a ton of like repeat patterns, but you will be able to see like, you know, like the, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday strength progressions will be done on the same day and compete that will be done in affiliate as well. Yeah. And I think that's a great way for the class member that maybe wants to start following compete at some point, they can go back and forth if they needed to. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Awesome. Well, I think that's it. We're really excited about this. This is the time of year. We, we say this every, every, every year, but this is the time where you want to start, right? Like if you, if you have big goals for the next season, start building your foundations now so that you can build those walls later on. Basically, we're saying <laughs> if you start now, you'll be able it's to run. Shale, it's your shale already. It's your shale. You'll be able to run the Boston Marathon in sub three in one year. Yeah, exactly. You Just like right. Ryan did. <laughs> totally. For real though, props to that guy. Yeah, that was impressive. so impressive. I know, Not, he's a monster. More impressive watching him stick to the... I think the theme we're talking about now is like trusting his process of when he started, he wasn't going out with like these super aggressive progressions and trying to run super fast and like reaching too aggressively for things that were out, that were out of reach, reaching for things out of reach. <laughs> 
anyways, he was very patient with his progression, and that just comes with taking time. And I think being smart about, you know, I have days where I'm not just focused on just driving with hammered, you know, hard intensity all the time. I'm being, I'm, ta- I'm okay with slowing down a little bit and making sure that I'm actually learning the skill correctly and shrinking that down a little bit in CrossFit, we run on an annual basis. So I think people just, they learn skills a little more rapidly. And I think that it's still the same concept though, when you come into one of these programs, like being okay of knowing this is the time of year to start slow and build. And then next year you'll look back and be like, I can't believe how much I've accumulated. So we're yeah, excited to sure. jump in now. Yeah. Play the long game. All right. Peace. See you guys.